My name is Maricela Fleites Lear, and I am from Cuba, this beautiful island in the Caribbean Sea. I was born in Cuba in 1959, so the very year of the Cuban Revolution, and lived in Cuba uh, from 1959 to 1992. So all my education, up to my uh, first PhD candidacy in philosophy was in Cuba. Growing up um, was a mix of um, a lot of things from um, scarcity to, uh, on the other hand, uh, the beautiful, joyful ideal, uh, kind of utopian ideal that we were building uh, a society for you know the good of all and a very social justice oriented society and um, I definitely benefited from uh, at the time the free access of a very good education and uh, social services like medicine etc um, and again uh, I grew up that experience particularly the first uh, 15 years, 20, yeah, first 15 years, 18 years, um, gave me this sense of uh, very high ethical principles of working for the good of society, um, doing anything that was needed for the community. Um, so to this day, I carry that in my heart, in my mind, uh, that principle of, um, uh, while of course, it is important to have, you know, compensation, money, etc. But mostly thinking about, you know, working and doing everything you do, thinking about, you know, the contributions to the larger society. I left Cuba in 1992 uh, to join my husband, who um, is a man from the United States, and we married in Cuba several years prior. So in 1992, I decided to uh, join him rather than the other way around, who, which was um, at some point had been a possibility uh, for me, at least in my mind. So um, 1992, basically I came to, first to San Diego for a year and then to Tacoma. So I've been in Tacoma since 1993. Originally, I, I wanted not to come as an immigrant, but rather I thought, well, um, uh, let me go as a fiancé first to see, you know, if I was able to adapt, if I liked it, right? And the United States said, no, no way. Then I tried to come as uh, a scholar with a grant, um, and that was also a no-no, so the United States didn't allow me to do that. Again, same reason that I was an agent of Castro, which I was like, what? At the time, I had been already expelled from my job at the university, uh, among other things, because of my, you know, very strong dissident activities. We didn't have any choice but to get married to obtain that visa to come here. Uh, but yet, even after marriage, uh, when I went to, uh, at the time, the, the, Cuba didn't ha the United States didn't have an embassy in Cuba, uh, but rather a special interest office. And uh, so I had to go there to get my visa, and they, still refused to give me, give me a, an immigrant visa. Um, they wanted me to apply as a, a political refugee. And I said, no, that's not why I'm going to the United States. I'm going to the United States because my husband is, from, is a USian, right? He's from the United States. They, they basically said, if you're going to the United States, you cannot come back, which was awful because my whole family was there and what if you know I didn't adapt to being in the United States 
you know, what if my relationship with my husband didn't work out? Because we have been, yeah, very in love, but in a long distance relationship, right? Um, he will come to Cuba and uh, visit, but it's not the same, right? So, uh, but Cuba forced me to leave as with a, basically a stamp on my passport that said no return, permanent um, migrant. Uh, and at the time, again, 1992, that meant you couldn't go back ever. Eventually that changed, luckily, and uh, I was back visiting my family in 1994 or 95, I can't remember. Um, and now, of course, it's very easy for Cubans to go back and forth. It was a very uh, complicated, draining process on both sides. But at the end, it all turned out great. My relation with my husband is wonderful. We adore each other. And uh, now we have another daughter. The oldest is 35 and the youngest 24. So we ended up in Tacoma because of work. Uh, so he applied for the, the job at the time. There was a, a, a job opening for a full-time tenure track professor in Latin American history. And he was finishing his PhD at the time um, and uh, applied and got the job. And we came and uh, loved the area. We came to visit before accepting the, the, the position. And I also applied again for uh, uh, to teach Spanish and loved the area. One condition I established with my husband was I'm an islander. I have to see the sea every day. For me, being surrounded and landlocked is impossible. I, I get anxious. Um, even when I visit, you know, somewhere that is not near the sea, I just feel trapped. Um, and the lakes, when, you know, I love lakes, I love river, but that doesn't do it. It has to be the sea, it has to be salt water. So that was one of the attractions to this area. Of course, the Puget Sound at the time sounded very foreign to me compared to the Caribbean Sea, obviously. So um, we came uh, both with our uh, oldest daughter um, in 93 and fell in love with the area. And now I adore the Puget Sound. I'm one of those crazy ones who swim with no um, wetsuits in the Puget Sound all summer long. Uh, it was obviously a very difficult transition because um, I didn't have any clues of, uh, about how to live in a society like this. I mean, think about the fact that I grew up in a Cuba where I, I didn't have a credit card. Uh, I didn't have uh, checks, you know. I didn't work really for money. <laughs> um, because education was provided for, uh, rent was provided for, um, uh, medical services were, were provided for. So uh, really, it, it was a completely different approach to money, right? And so I had to learn a lot of cultural um, and, uh, you know, details on how to, you know, from, it, it was like starting to walk again, you know in a completely foreign language, in, a, in an environment where you, uh, for instance, we are people who are constantly hugging and kissing, and, um, and that's not the culture here, right? So you, and we, for instance, move a lot of our hands, so you, I have had to, you know, learn to be <laughs> more, uh, you know, uh, a different, right? So learning those clues, right? Those uh, cultural differences, and that is not that it's worse or better, it's just different. Um, especially, you know, having a child, you know, coming to the public school system here and uh, 
you know, learning basic things about how do you interact with other mothers, right, in that know nothing about you. There are many issues that people uh, should understand about immigrants in Tacoma and in general in the United States. Uh, we are right now, unfortunately, in a xenophobic moment where politicians nationwide are playing politics on the back of immigrants and using immigration as a tool for political gain. And um, I would like my fellow citizens, um, as a citizen of the United States that I am, I would like my fellow citizens to look at history, to go beyond the, the sound bites, and go beyond, of course, the fake news, go beyond the um, very charged political messages and take a very uh, hard look at the history of this country. I have found, uh, since day one, really, uh, a very welcoming community here. Um, I've been blessed with uh, really great people who have accepted me in spite of me being so different, particularly when I arrived here, I didn't speak English much. Don't assume you have to lose your identity, lose your language. One of the issues that, um, uh, that I uh, regret, right, is that many immigrants stop talking their languages to their children, right? Because they think they need to integrate and that that's one way. No, we can speak many languages and learn many languages at the same time. So uh, one of my advices to any immigrant is to um, don't, uh, to, to keep, you know, their identity. And at the same time, um, be open to uh, understand again and learn the different clues, the different possibilities that um, are surrounding us. Um, value education tremendously, right? That's a, an important way of integrating and uh, of um, advancing and contributing to this society. Um, and very importantly, don't feel like you're less than others because of having an accent. Um, in fact, if you learn a foreign language after the age of 12, without being immersed in it, um, you can never lose your accent. No matter how hard I try, I cannot lose my accent. And guess what? I don't want to. I don't need to. If I can communicate and people can understand me. So uh, one, again, one advice for my fellow immigrants is uh, don't feel like you're lesser than because you have an accent or because you're different, right? So um, both, you know, try to find ways to um, integrate into our community to contribute to our community uh, while at the same time don't, without losing who you are, right? Uh, because again, that beautiful mix um, is going to make us better. <laughs>